Well, I, I had the privilege of being intensively involved in the establishment and the, the architecture of, of, of PEPFAR. It was really an interesting situation. I also, in my position at the NIH, had the privilege and the opportunity to interact with multiple administrations, multiple presidents that I had the opportunity to advise and discuss uh, this whole issue, not only of domestic, but of global HIV AIDS. And I can tell you exactly how PEPFAR came about. There had been uh, a lot of activity on the part of a number of people of what we can do to help globally for those people who were HIV infected. Because remember, if you early on, what I mentioned to you, we thought that this incorrectly was a disease of middle class white gay men in the United States, and it's the farthest from it. It's a disease heterosexually, mostly in low and middle income countries. 90% of the cases are in the developing world. 67% of the cases are in sub-Saharan Africa. So there was a lot of, of activity of now. This was in 1996 was when we first had the development of what's called a combination antiviral therapy. HART, they refer to it as highly active antiretroviral therapy that was transforming the lives of HIV-infected individuals, where you would go from every single one of my patients would die within a short period of time of my becoming aware of their being infected in the early 80s, to the mid-90s where you could give therapy that was truly life-saving, not only just keeping people alive, but keeping them healthy. So the question is, how do we get the fruits of research and public health that was developed in the developed world, how do we get that to the developing world? And it turned out, that President Bush, George W. Bush, uh, essentially sent Tommy Thompson, who was the then Secretary of Health and Human Services, in the spring of 2002, and I, he sent us to Sub-Saharan Africa and said, scope it out and see what it is that we as a rich nation can do to help people in the developing world with HIV. So we went there, we, we visited a, a bunch of different countries, and at that time there was the uh, understanding that you could very cheaply give a certain dose of a drug to a woman and to a baby after the birth were born and block mother to child transmission. So I came back and presented in the Roosevelt Room to the president and his staff. Everyone was there, all the, the people who were involved, Carl Rove and, and, uh, and Andy Card and, 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 and Josh Bolton, and I presented this, what I thought would be about a $500 million program to block mother to child transmission. So the president immediately said, great idea, let's do it, turned to his, his, his staff and said, make it happen. And then on the way out, uh, he grabbed me with one arm and grabbed Josh Bolton, who was then the deputy chief of staff, who was currently the chief of staff to the president. And he said, I want you to go back and I want you to put together a program that's much more transforming, much more bold than this. Don't worry about how much it'll cost, but something that's a game changer is the word he used for the developing world, something that we, a rich country, can do for them. So I went back and kept on doing mathematical modelings of how we can encompass the most people, what countries would be benefit the most, what, what would a reliable and reasonable goal be. So we came up with a program of $15 billion over five years aimed at treating 2 million people, preventing 7 million infections, and caring for 10 million people, including AIDS orphans. And I, we worked on that, myself and, and a bunch of other people, um, over a period of several months, from the late spring, early summer of 2002, through the entire fall, never knowing whether the White House was going to accept this at all. And then right before the State of the Union address in January of 2003, I got a call from the White House to come down and help Mike Gerson, who was the speechwriter for the president at the time, to put a paragraph together how we were going to announce the PEPFAR program. And that's how it came about. And it was really extraordinary, A, that we would do it, but the thing also is that it has been a spectacularly successful program. Will likely be the major legacy of this administration, uh, certainly in the arena of health and maybe in, in anything. And now, as most people know, it's been reauthorized for an additional five years at a tune of $48 billion. So it went from a $15 billion program to a $48 billion program. You know, they're, they're, they're very similar in, in many respects. Uh, one of the things that the president mentioned to me as he sent us uh, to Africa, and then when I came back and I worked with Josh Bolton and Gary Etzen and others at, at the White House, was that 
there was a lot of issues of when we were giving money to the developing world, when you have multiple partners involved, you never know where the money is going and often it gets misspent. So he wanted something that was not only a game changer, as he said, but that was totally accountable. And the administration felt the only way to be totally accountable is if you do a bilateral thing between the United States government and a particular organization. Not necessarily a government. It could be an NGO. It could be things like you know, Partners in Health, Poor Farmers Organization, or, or, or uh, the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But it had to be something that was accountable. The Global Fund for HIV, AIDS, Malaria, and Tuberculosis is a multilateral organization that involves not just HIV, but also TB and malaria. And it is a central fund that people make pledges to, and then the Global Fund distributes it out to people depending on what their proposals for doing various types of distribution of drugs or what have you. It should be noted that the United States of America is also the largest contributor to the Global Fund. We contribute about one-third of all the resources to the Global Fund. So the United States' role in international HIV, AIDS, and other third world diseases like malaria and tuberculosis takes two channels, a bilateral channel that's totally accountable to the United States via PEPFAR, and a multilateral that goes through the Global Fund that has a much more diffuse aspect to it.